All right. We made it to the finals. And we've got two two drops, a three drop, a four drop, and a five drop, and two lands on the draw. I think I'm going to keep it. We have enough mana sources in this deck that I feel like pretty comfortable that we should be able to get to where we need to go. And uh, I like the two drop Predatory Sliver, and Fire Shrieker can do a good job of getting in a bunch of damage, too. Uh, yeah, let's just run out the Sliver here. All right, and he's missed a land drop, so that's nice for us. Um, lead things off with an attack. And we have our first decision point here. I think I'm going to go for the Fire Shrieker. Gets more damage in than the, uh, than the nine zombie. And it allows us next turn to equip an attack and we can still cast nine zombie, or we can just attack and leave Briar Pack alpha mana up. All right, so this, ooh, and we got a Deadly Recluse as well. Um, so the play that I'm gonna make here is I'm gonna equip Fire Shrieker and attack, and then I'm gonna play nine zombie. We could play Deadly Recluse, which is an even better blocker against Scroll Thief, but since our opponent's in red, he could just shock our Deadly Recluse, get in for a card, and that would be kind of a disaster. He can't do that with 9 Zombie. He's going to have to attack, we block, and then he shocks. So it's it's less bad. If he has something like Time Ebb, then we're going to get Time Ebbed either way, but we, haven't, we, we create a really nice threat here. Hitting for 4 every single turn is pretty sweet, so let's do that. And we'll play the zombie. We've got Hunt the Weak that will probably be used on a flyer of some sort. If he puts up like a 2-2 two -two or a 2-1 flyer, then we can uh, Hunt the Weak, our predatory sliver onto it, kill it, and get in there with our double strike 3-3 three -three at that point. So a lot of good stuff going on here for us. Uh, the Briar Pack Alpha... Sitting back is a nice combat trick as well, and also a great threat with Fire Shrieker. All right, so he's hit a couple of land drops in a row, so he seems to have dug himself out of that mess. Now the question is, what is he going to do now? All right, he's going to Flames of the Firebrand to take out our 9 zombie. I got to say, even though he's getting a card out of it, that could have gone a lot worse. <laughs> that could have gone a lot worse. Um, okay, so now he's only got the one blue mana up, so we've got kind of a clear path here. So we can we can resolve a wood, Woodborne Behemoth, which is a great blocker here, and hit him for 4. Uh, we can Hunt the Weak to kill Scroll Thief and then hit him for 6. That's a pretty sweet play. Um, we can also just like attack him, Briar Pack Alpha our guy, hit him for eight and have a three, three back, which is also okay. But I think I'd rather just have the behemoth if we were going to take that line. Um, as it sits, I think I'm actually going to go ahead and take advantage of the hunt the week while he can't really interact. And I like the damage hit here as well. And it makes this, this creature even better as far as uh, a threat being a threat goes. So you take six, and now you can't shock our predatory sliver, so we don't have to... What we're basically doing is protecting our investment of casting and equipping a Fire Shrieker. If he uses one mana to kill our predatory sliver and blank all that mana we spent, we can start to fall behind pretty quickly. Remember, he's got six cards in hand. All right, so Chandra's Outrage during the main phase is going to take that thing down. That makes sense. Um, for this turn... I like just playing the Woodborne. Actually, but we need to represent uh, a card that we do have, but I want to make sure he respects Giant Growth and or Ranger Guile. That's the reason why he main faced killed our guy. All right, there's a Claustrophobia. So we didn't. We obviously don't have the Ranger Guile here, or else that wouldn't have happened. But now we've got a sweet turn. We've got a Rumbling Bailoth and a Deadly Recluse, and then we have enough mana next turn 
that we can equip and still have Briar Pack man, uh, Briar Pack Alpha mana available for oh, for a big burn spell. Another, you know, if he gets a little greedy this time and, and hopes to get us with Chandra's Outrage, um, when we go to equip, we can get him. That's a that's a play that'll happen fairly often. Right now, though, the Rumbling Bailoth is completely lethal. We're going to equip and attack him, so he, he's really got to deal with it here. Got to come up with something. This is a situation where, like, he might have opportunity. Remember, we talked about that earlier, but it doesn't do anything here. He can draw his whole deck. I don't care because he'd just be dead if, if that's what he had. Archaeomancer is going to get back. Probably Chandra's Outrage. He's already played his land for the turn, so he can't get back flames and uh, and cast it this turn. And there's the outrage. All right, so we've got decisions. We hit another land here. I think what I want to do is put Fire Shrieker on Deadly Recluse, actually. Because he's going to block this Rumbling Bailoth either way. If I put it on the Recluse... Then uh, he doesn't. Then he's he's forced to take at least two damage here. If I put it on the Rumbling Bailoth, he just snaps it off and he takes only one damage. And uh, my accountant tells me that two is more than one. So let's go with that. Go ahead, and we're just going to leave a Briar Pack mana, a Briar Pack Alpha mana here. If he goes for a big, uh, for for the what's it called, then we we should be able to get him here. Now, if he counters this, that's annoying. Yeah, he didn't have it. So, either way, he's dead. So, if Briar Pack Alpha resolves, then it saves our guy. We can equip and kill him, and he's only got two more mana left. Um, and even if he had a way to interact with this thing still dying, then this is lethal now. So, Okay. What did he do? Well, not a ton. We saw one target for that. He is blue-red, so plummet's probably an option. Again, I'm not in a huge hurry, though, for the plummet stuff because, uh, because we've got double giant spider and deadly recluse already. It's not like we're dying to kill that kind of thing. So I think we're just okay. Uh, Naturalize and Plummet are the cards that we're going to sort of keep our eye on again as cards that could come in. But we're going to need to see some targets for those first. Now uh, this looks fine. The uh, Mark of the Vampire is a little awkward here, but... You know, there's that Fire Shrieker again. I do like having that. It just makes all of our guys really nice threats. Especially against Blue Red. What is this? Seacoast Strike. Do not care. Ooh, Mind Rot's going to be very good versus him, but I think we would just want to kind of curve out here, make a Predatory Sliver, make a Fire Shrieker, and then we, when he gets down a little lower on cards, we'll, we'll Mind Rot away his opportunity or something. He's going to time ebb us here. It's an aggressive play. Uh, it doesn't really bug me that much. Um, this is an inter interesting one though because Fire Shrieker if we play it then next turn we can cast Predatory Sliver and equip it if we just play Predatory Sliver then we have an attacker but he can block it if he wants anyway yeah I'm just going to run out the uh, this game's going to go for a while like if, if things go the way we want it's going to go for a while so I don't think that you know we're going to make some big tempo play where we hit Predatory Sliver equip Fire Shrieker and really get the guy. Vial of Poison. Okay, that card's just plain old bad. And we hit our land drop for the turn. Um, yeah, okay. I'll just go for the Predatory Sliver, see if that equips. Yes, it does. Or if that resolves, I mean, and then we're going to go ahead and equip. Next turn, if we draw a land, we're going to play one of our fives. If we don't, we're probably just going to Mind Rot him. Like, he'll have easy decisions. Okay, there's a Claustrophobia hit. But yeah, I think we're just going to Mind Rot this guy. Well, it's a little bit different of a decision now. Nine Zombie plus Equip is actually pretty decent. Yeah, let's do that. 
He's still got four cards in hand. He's just going to discard a bunch of his red cards to our, our Mind Rot anyway. Um, unfortunately, this doesn't do much here, because if he, if he just doesn't want to take damage, he just doesn't have to, but... What do you... What did he do? Oh, he brought in Demolish for our equipment. Okay. You did it. Okay, now let's start playing some some beef. And we're going to be uh He's he's playing this this awful card. Just a terrible very bad magic card. And an armored Cancrix. Okay, well that looks a little better now, doesn't it? Uh, okay, so we get to we get to mine rot him for value here, though. For full value, that is. Oh, and we even have a follow up play as well. So let's get these cards out of his hand. Let's see if he's got that opportunity or not. Curious. We saw two of them in the draft. Chandra's outrage and messenger Drake. That's awesome. Um, we can hit him for a damage point here. And there's really no reason not to. This costs a mana to sack. Yeah, he says, ouch, in the chat. Yeah, well, what do you want from me, buddy? All right, so let's hit him for a point of damage. Because he's not going to be able to attack through our Deadly Recluse anyway. And, yeah, and I mean, we need to represent this attack anyway for when we draw one of our combat tricks. Recluse is sweet here, though. Again, Vial of Poison, so so such a poor magic card. It, it makes him two for one just to get anything done here. Um, but it's pretty good right now because we have Mark and he can just get us. So we're just going to make a bunch of dudes here. Make a dude. One, two, three, four, five, six. I guess I could let him two for one me. Like if he blocks Seacoast Drake on, on Behemoth and then Vials of Poisons, then it gets rid of that thing. Not a big deal though. It's going to get blocked anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to send in the, the Deadly Recluse here because I certainly would trade it off for the Cankrix and he can't block the Seacoast Drake. And uh, we're just trading a point of damage for a point of damage, but I've got a big life gain swing in my favor at some point during the course of the game if I want it. Lightning Talons. Okay, well, that's going to change the clock a bit. Make more dudes. One, two, so one more land and our Woodborne is huge. Um, I can throw Mark of the Vampire on the Spore Mound here, which means that if he doesn't, he basically it forces him to block here and use the Vial of Poison. And then when I get this thing big enough, I can just kill him. Uh, I like that, because we're actually on a three-turn clock here. Now, I can also put it on this thing, but then I don't want to lose it. So let's put it on Spore Mound. Yeah. And get a bunch of attacks in here. This, 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 this. I still don't want to get, let, or not this thing can't attack. I still don't want to let this thing die, and then I'll attack with this too. I got to make sure I sack this guy to get that point in there as well. This forces the issue. He just he can't he just can't take hits of five where I'm gaining five and he's losing five. So he just really has to block the Cancrix in two for two. Um yeah, do it. Use your vial, sir. And this just puts us puts us in a good position because uh when we hit another land here we're gonna be able to really get him. I'm still not going to sack this Predatory Sliver until the last second. Oh, pitch Burn's pretty decent here. But if I hit a land soon, then I'll still be in fine position. He might not even attack. Yeah. All right, there it is. Hit the land. Uh, so he can do four. He can do a bunch of damage, but, I mean, I'll trade off my whole board for – I'll trade off his whole board for this thing. So let's attack. Sure. You take two. He's going to get to use pitch burn to take out this or this, but it kind of doesn't matter. Okay. 
He can finish this guy off, of course. Really what he has to do, I guess. Drain you. And say go. So the reason why I'm holding off on sacking this thing is just because if I draw the other one, it'll be a 3-3 instead of a 2-2. Two -two. There's no real hurry. I can do it in response to anything. Claustrophobia. Okay. Well, if we don't win this game, we are for sure... Ooh, that's a good draw. We are for sure going to be uh, bringing in the... Uh, the naturalize because it hits now two claustrophobias and a lightning talons. The lightning talons is a big one. It hits this too, technically, but I don't, th there's not too many situations. I don't think where I'd actually use it for that, but all right. So this brings him down to eight and then he's really at seven, six, five, four, three, two. So he's got like one turn. He has to draw something sweet right now or he's just dead. And I'm going to start sacking stuff on end step or I'm going to start sacking this and this on end step for sure. Because now the predatory sliver is not going to be attacking. All right, we got him. So we were able to take that thing down uh, with a pretty sweet deck. Um, you know, we didn't have any of the big power plays uh, in, on the black side of things, main, mainly like Doomblade, Send Gear Vampire, or something like that. But we had some really good green spells. And I think our deck just kind of tended to work well together. You know, it, it had some, some nice synergies. And uh, it was a well-rounded deck with removal threats, uh, you know, different, different things that needed to be answered. Um, and 14 looks pretty cool. Uh, I've been drafting it at the local shop a bit, and uh, I'm looking forward to a, a nice, you know, a little simpler of a format, a little more stripped down from the Dragon's Maze nonsense that we've been used to, where it's just like you have to worry about 100 different things. And uh, I, I've liked M14 so far. If you guys want to send any uh, feedback via email, limitedresourcespodcast at gmail.com is where you can do that. You can follow me on Twitter at Marshall underscore LR, and you can join the Limited Resources clan here on Magic Online. Very simple. Just send me a message here to Marshall underscore LR. Just uh, two rules. You can't be a jerk, and uh, you got to love magic. Those are the only two things that really will, will prevent you from getting in the clan if, you, if either of those you do not meet. Um, last but not least, LRcast.com, the place to get everything limited resources. Guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.